And today we're going to talk about science as opposed to fiction. Now, what more do you need to know about the so-called climate conference in Copenhagen than the following? One of the world's worst dictators, Mugabe of Africa. Mugabe, a man who has destroyed his nation, is in favor of climate control legislation. Chavez, a dictator, is in favor of climate control legislation. Fidel Castro, a murderer, is in favor of climate control legislation. And here we have the dunces of the West dancing to their tune. This is crazier by the minute. So today, uh, the uh, uh, junior doc goes there. Junior doc Obama goes there. And listen to clip one. All of you would not be here unless you, like me, were convinced that this danger is real. This is not fiction. It is science. It is science. Well, Mr. Obama, I know a little bit more about science than you do. You're a politician. Let me tell you something. Mr. Obama, science is based on facts, not politics, Mr. Obama. And to say that all scientists agree is un unto itself a lie. First of all, all scientists agree on almost nothing. So unto itself, the statement is absurd. But when it comes to climate science, there's great debate, my friends. And so, my friends... Let me tell you something. One of the finest articles on this subject can be found from England in the Telegraph up on michaelsavage.com by one of my favorite polemicists, Gerald Warner. And he says, the Copenhagen Climate Summit is the most important paper in the world. is nothing more than a glorified UN press release. Here's how he puts it. When you attempt at recreating the Congress of Vienna with a third-rate cast of extras, and it turns into a shambles when the data with which you have tried to terrify the world is daily exposed as ever more phony. When the blatant greed and self-interest of the participants has become obvious to all beholders, when those pesky polar bears just keep increasing and multiplying, what do you do? And he goes on to what they've done. And what they've done is they come up with a lie about an apocalypse that's about to come over the world. And he said, this has marked the beginning of the landslide that is collapsing, the whole imposture of global warming. The pseudoscience of global warming is a global laughingstock, and Copenhagen is a farce. Now listen to this line, because I didn't know this till today. In the warmest camp, the main man is a railway engineer with huge investments in the carbon industry. Did you hear that? In the warmest camp, the main man is a railway engineer with huge investments in the carbon industry. That says it all. The world's boiler being heroically damped down by the fat controller. Al Gore, occupant of the only private house that can be seen from space. So huge is its energy consumption, he wanted to charge people $1,200 to be photographed with him at Copenhagen. There is a man who is really worried about the planet's future. If there were not $45 trillion of Western citizens' money at stake, this would be the funniest moment in world history. What a bunch of buffoons, he writes. Not since Neville Chamberlain tugged the Claridge's luncheon bill from his pocket, and flourished it on the steps of the aircraft that brought him back from Munich, has a worthless scrap of paper been so audaciously hyped. Though there was one good moment at Copenhagen, and he writes about it. So we know it's a fraud. We know that it's all fantasy. What more do you need to know? What more do you need to know than the following? Mugabe? Mugabe is in favor of global warming money. Hugo Chavez, the dictator, the buffoon, the uh, buffoon, Hugo Chavez, he wants the money. Danish thugs in the street, uh, the streets of Copenhagen with red bandanas, with uh, hammers and sickles, not shown by CNN. Shame on you, Mr. Klein, Mr. Little Man of CNN. Snow on the ground in Copenhagen. Snow on their filthy bicycle seats. At least they'll get cleansed. It's unbelievable to me. Have you ever seen anything like this? Have you ever seen anything like this? Well, it gets worse. It gets worse. Obama goes on and on. And listen to clip nine, how religious he gets. With courage and faith, I believe that we can meet our responsibilities to our people and the future of our planet. Thank you very much. Tepid applause, Citizen Kane. With courage and faith now. Now it's faith. It went from science to faith to save the planet. Now, I have a question for you. If so much is at stake, $45 trillion, wouldn't you think we'd want to debate this? Wouldn't you at least want to hear both sides of the argument? 
Wouldn't you want to see the arguments that show that the whole thing is a fraud and both camps get to argue with the U.N. equal time before you make a commitment like this? It's the same thing from this gangster regime, whether it is health care reform being done in the middle of the night by gangsters, whether it's Harry Reid voting at midnight, whether it's Nancy Lugosi stealing money like it's being minted because they're minting it for her cronies who are going to benefit. People say to me, where's the money in the health care bill? How come they all want it? I said, don't you understand what this is? This is stealing one part of the health care system for their friends called the insurance industry. It's stealing the private insurance industry and turning it over to others who are friends of the Democrats who have their own insurance companies who are going to get all of the business. Don't you understand it's called steering? Don't you understand how patronage works? Don't you schmucks understand that gangsters have taken over the country? That the Democrats today are a gangster party? Don't you get it? Despite all of their high rhetoric about saving the poor and saving the planet, it's all about stealing money. Do you understand that? Play uh, Come Go again. Come go with me, whatever you're playing. I want to hear rock and roll. I'm sick of it. That's all. What do you want me to do? Why the Globe is Not Warming. A Hundred Reasons Why the Globe is Not Warming. It was written uh, by Phil Brennan today. And he's talking about the European Foundation, which has chronicled a hundred reasons humans are free from any blame for alleged global warming. You ready to write this down? Are you ready for it? One of the most important disclosures is that despite a huge surge in recorded CO2 emissions after World War II, global temperatures fell for 40 years after 1940. Moreover, all through the Earth's history, temperatures often have been warmer than now, and CO2 levels often have been more than 10 times as high, and the planet's climate has changed numerous times throughout history. How much more do you need to know to understand that the claim that CO2 is the most common greenhouse gas is a myth? How many times do you have to hear this? It's a lie. Moreover, the poles of the Earth are not warming. Although the western Arctic may be getting somewhat warmer, Did you know that the eastern Arctic and Greenland are getting colder? Did you know that? They're showing you a snapshot, not the moving picture. And so if you want to be lied to, go ahead and listen to these gangsters called Democrats. I've had enough of this. It is total scientific guano. You know what guano is? It's the white stuff that birds drop on the side of a cliff. The science was rigged up by these gangsters in these universities who were out to get a fortune off this. They should go to jail. Their grants should be taken back. They should be forced to clean the guano off statues of greater men than themselves. How did this country fall to such a level that a char- that a charade artist like Obama could be president number one and that the Democrats or overt gangsters running a regime could get away with this malarkey? I mean, what more do you need to know than people like Mugabe, the dictator of Africa, is in favor of such a bill because it would take money from your pocket and give it to him so he can continue to oppress his own people. What more do you need to know than Hugo Chavez, the buffoon and gangster of his nation, wants this to pass? I mean, what's going on in this world if people don't see it with their own eyes? Common sense tells you that there is no man-induced global warming. I'll say it to you again for the 90,000th time. I've been telling you this for several years now. Let's say you only went to the fifth grade. Let's say you have Al Gore's education level in science and you went to the fifth or fourth grade. And let's say your father was a uh, coal man, which Al Gore's father was. And you made your fortune in coal working for Occidental Petroleum and then Occidental Coal. And you grew up making a fortune on coal. And then you figured out, like the pig uh, slaughterhouse, I think it was, uh, I forget which one he said, we sell everything but the squeal. So Al Gore's family made its original fortune working in oil and coal. And then the baby Gore comes along, and after inventing the Internet and writing Love Story, he decides, wait a minute, I, my father made his money selling coal. I can make money selling carbon credits. I'll come up with a cockamamie story called Global Warming, and I'll peddle it, and I won't debate anybody. I'll put out movies that scare children. It's unbelievable to me how this goes on. The country is bankrupt, and we got junior Doc Obama trying to give away even more money that he doesn't have. You got Hillary Clinton promising $100 billion to 
the most vulnerable nations. Well, I got news for you, Hillary. America is one of the most vulnerable nations. What world are you living in, Hillary Clinton? What world are you living in, Hillary Clinton? America is now one of the most vulnerable nations because of people like you. We're vulnerable. We're about to lose our freedoms.